Hello, this is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how to make scalloped circles using Make the Cut software. I have a picture here of several different versions of the file that will do and you can choose the style that you like. This technique can also be done in other software such as Sure Cuts a Lot, Corel Draw, Illustrator, and probably others too. This is just the one that I use and once you see the technique you can try it in the software of your choice. First thing I'm going to do is click on the basic shapes icon at the top of the screen and type in CI to find circles. I'm going to double click on the circle to add it to my screen. And it gets added up where my cursor is. This is a one inch circle and I'm going to make another circle because I'm going to use the one inch circle to make my scalloped edges and I'm going to use another circle that's bigger for the circle to go around. So in order to duplicate this I can hold control shift and click that'll create another one. If I drag it down you see that I have two. I'm going to leave this one at one inch and I'm going to resize this one at five inches with the gold like lock icon to hold the proportions. So I type five and enter. Now I have a circle. Now I could use what we call a donut in this software. If I click on basic shapes again and type DO, I would get the circle with a hole in it, double click, and it's added to my screen. But perhaps I don't like the size of hole in the donut. You notice that this hole is quite a bit bigger than that hole. But I can make my own hole in my circle by clicking on it. Again, control shift and click gives me the second one. My handles switch to the distortion handles, but if I click again, I can get my selection arrow. And I'm going to resize that circle that I've selected to a point 0.3 and enter. Now it's a bit smaller. You can make it the size you want. Now I'm going to drag around this and type S to stack the two and then click on the join icon, control plus J at the bottom. So now I have my own custom donut that I can use. I'm going to switch to the green mat so that we can see through these shapes and you can see better what I'm doing with them. To get the circle to go around, to get the donut to go around the circle, I'm going to hold a control key, click on the donut, and drag it over the circle. As soon as I drag it over the circle, you see that my cursor turned to a square, circle, and triangle. When I release the mouse and release the control key, I get a window that opens, Wrap Objects to Path. It wrapped my donut around as many times as I indicated on the repeat count. I have the repeat box marked and if I change the number you can watch as the number increases I get more. I can adjust the spacing to get the pieces overlapping just like I want. If it's too small you notice over here that they don't connect and there's not room to add another but if I increase that spacing a little then I can adjust it to just where I want it to be. I can change the vertical alignment with this middle slider here. I can make it outside the circle or I can make it inside but what I don't want these donut holes to be covered up so I want to adjust the alignment just so the donut holes are outside of the circle. And again you can make your alignment to be where you want it to be. 
and since I like that I'm just going to click on this red icon here. That allows me to duplicate the original so I keep my original in case I want to use it. Then I'll click on accept and would I like to weld the paths? Yeah, I think I would. So I'm going to click on yes, weld all of those donuts together and I'll move my original out of the way. Now I have kind of a bracelet and I have my original circle. I'm going to use control Z to take it back and what I want to do now is I want to select all of this and weld it all together. So now I have a design that looks like this one on the right with no frame. If I want to have a frame in it I could add an, a circle again. I'll just get another one here. Type CI double click to get my circle and this time I'll resize it. You can resize that circle to whatever size you want the inside to be. I think about 4.6 would be good for me and press enter. Then if I select both my little doily and my circle and type S will stack perfectly in the middle and if I click on join you can see that now I have this design here. You could, if I control Z, you could change that size to be whatever size you want. Again, select and type S and join if you want the frame to be thicker. I like that effect. It looks pretty good. If I, I want to make one like um, this one where the letter B is and I don't want circles in it. If you already have one with circles and you want to get rid of them you can always click on blackout to give you this here and then you can add another circle um, or I'll undo this. I can break this apart using the break the bottom move Uh, if I want to make this, then I'm going to select just the outside piece and the inside piece and join those. Then I can move this and now I've got this B shape. So, so far we've done all of these shapes now except for the one with the inner circle. I'll undo this to and I'll join all these together just by clicking on the join icon to get back to this D design here. To add the center ring in there I can click again on my basic shapes, double, double click on the circle, resize this to where I would like it to be to fit inside. Now you can specify a specific size or you can drag to see what looks good to you. And once you have the size that you like then you can uh, click on the shadow layer which is the fourth icon from the right and you can make the shadow layer. I'll make it a minus so that it's inset shadow point maybe one five you get a preview here if you like it to be narrower you can make it narrower. It looks good to me. I accept it and now I'll select just the inside lines and join. And Now I'll select all of them and type S to stack and now I have something similar to this. Again you can make your lines as thick or as thin as you'd like. To add the text to my design. I click on the text and fonts and I've selected Curls MT which is a free font that I got from Font Packs Yahoo group and um, to add the text I'll click on the T and I've got split by glyphs selected here. You could put any letters that you want. I put a space in and use capitals A, B, C, D and accept. Now these letters are kind of thin and when I cut them sometimes they want to tear when I pull them off the mat. So I like to thicken my letters a little bit. To do that 
I go to shadow and instead of doing a negative shadow I will do a 0.02 positive shadow which just thickens them a little bit but usually enough to give me what I need so I just pull away the original delete them and now you notice I have a little thicker letters and I could split them right now they're all as one group if I select one it selects them all so I can split them and resize them to what I would like them to be and again stack them to make them in the center select all and type S and it automatically centers these so that's how I made all of these different shapes now if I would like to use these shapes in some other software such as if I wanted to cut these on my Cricut Explorer I can export these file export as SVG and I could call these scalloped circles and save and then I can go into design space click on upload images and I'll do a vector upload because I have S SVG files so I'm going to browse to my desktop and look for scallop circle one and open and what this does is it brings my scallop circles onto this screen here and I click on save once I have that saved I can scroll down and it will these designs will be available for me to add to my screen right here so I'm going to click here and click on insert images and now my designs are on the screen ready to use in Cricut Design Space. If I would like to do the letters in the same color I need to ungroup first and if I want them to cut in exactly the same position with each other I select all three parts of the design and click on attach and this will make them be one unit and they won't be separated in the cutting window. These I don't want to attach because I have different colors so I would cut these separately. Again if you want them to cut in a particular position you need to select all and attach. So that's available now. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.